Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In him is life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. He is so good. He is so good. Oh, mighty God. Mm. His presence is so amazing, isn't it? Mm. After a long day at work, you get to step into a peace, into his love, into his joy as we gather together. Mighty God. Thank you, worship team. Amazing worship. Mighty God. Well, praise the Lord, Anchor Church. I am honored to get to come before you today, my family, uh, and God. I, I love this. I, I'm privileged and honored to be here uh, to get to speak today. And, uh, of course, always honor Bishop, Sister Bounds, and the elders and leadership here. We are very blessed. Um, I uh, feel a word of encouragement tonight for, for the body to, to, to speak encouragement and faith. Um, my scriptures in a moment I'm, that I'm going to start out with is 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 16. And uh, I, I just realized that, you know, we, we sometimes in this walk with God, we... We uh, have struggling moments where it seems as if the prayers we've prayed or, or the things that we're going th through seem to discourage us. But the Lord would have me come tonight to encourage, to lift up, to build up, and uh, to bring a thought in a few short moments. I don't plan on being long tonight, but very simple a simple thing that brings vast results uh, in the kingdom if I had to title it tonight it would be out of my mind out of my mind You're laughing at me sister Crystal uh, it's all right first Corinthians 2 11 through 16 says for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in, in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Lord, I thank you for your word that is absolute and true. Thank you, mighty God, for what you're about to do in this place in your people. Let encouragement be loosed, mighty God, in your people. Let faith be built up, God, that they would be edified to your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, you may be seated. I would like to preface something for a moment. Um, that what I have to say is definitely not to make light of any type of mental illness or medical issue, which are very real. But when someone does something out of the norm, uh, we seem to declare and exclaim the foolishness of it, normally labeling them as crazy, nuts, or insane. In short, we say that they must be out of their mind. Uh, as an example, I used to, anybody ever seen uh, Steve Irwin, uh, the crocodile hunter? Did I say the right name? Irwin, right? Because there was, I think there was a Corwin that was the snake guy. They were both crazy. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so I've never really been afraid of death. You know, I'm not afraid of heights. I'm not afraid of water. Uh, I'm not afraid of closed spaces, anything like that. I've just never really been afraid of death. I don't care for pain. I'm not, you know. You know, I'm not going to put myself where I'm intentionally putting myself into pain. So when I thought of Steve Irwin, you know, when I'd watch him as a kid, 
you know, alligators and crocodiles are one of those creatures that can catch me on land because I'm not very fast and in water. You know, uh, my wife calls them danger logs. <laughs> they're like danger logs. They just sneak up on you. you know, they're going to eat you. So, so for him to go out into the swamps or into these areas and to jump on them, my, th my thought is, he must be out of his mind. You know what I'm saying? That, that is just crazy. Um, I remember a time when I was about 10 years old. My brother and I got this really bright idea that we were going to drag our trampoline over to the shed. And we leaned this ladder up against the shed and climbed to the roof. And uh, we decided that we were going to bounce a little bit higher that day. And just so he wouldn't chicken out, I kicked the ladder down. <laughs> now, mind you, he, I'm, I'm roughly 10, so he's probably around 8 years old. And being the wonderful big brother that I am, I made sure that he jumped first. And I may have pushed him uh, to make sure he jumped. But just as it's my turn to jump, I'm getting ready. I mean, my, my knees are bent. And I hear this voice coming from the distance. Mark Anthony Mahler Jr. My mother had decided to walk home from work for lunch that day. Just as I was about to jump. And I, I mean, she's yelling. Uh, sorry, Mama, but uh, she, she sent back there. Um, I mean, she's she yelling. And I'm like, she's probably about a half a block up the road coming down that sidewalk. And she is just a yelling coming down. And at this point, I'm like, I'm already in trouble. So I just jumped. <laughs> so when she got to me, do you know what I heard out of her mouth? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> you know, uh... Now, there are moments when the extreme act is not beneficial, such as jumping off of a shed at 10 years old or at any age, really. But what about the moments where we stop thinking like society and the things that society says are crazy or extreme and they bring out a success? Now, I'm an electrician. Uh, Brother Luke represent, right? Um, so... I'm going to just use a, uh, just two inventions as an example here. There's a statement I found. It says this. One of the most prolific inventors in the 19th century America, Thomas Edison, was awarded 1,093 patents in the USA alone. And one of his most famous influential creations was the first commercially viable electric light bulb. Far from excited about the prospect of affordable energy or affordable electricity in every home, Edison's light bulb was met with scorn. Scientist Henry Morton of the Stevens Institute of Technology predicted the invention would be a conspicuous failure. A British Parliament committee made the statement that, uh, it said this, that they concluded that the light bulb was good enough for our transatlantic friends, but unworthy of the attention of practical or scientific men. Uh, although... Edison himself seemed to learn a little about those that were negative to his inventions. Um, he was a very harsh critic of one of the most widely used inventions of today. Edison was a proponent of direct current power, uh, and, which, and he frequently ridiculed uh, Nikola Tesla, um, his model of alternating current, despite it being more efficient and practical method of supplying power. In the late 19th century, American inventor and entrepreneur George Westinghouse acquired Tesla's patent, and he was a competitor of Edison. And he was on the receiving end of one of Edison's uh, barbs that he would uh, shoot out every now and again, which was wildly inaccurate. It said, he predicted that fooling around with alternating current is just a waste of time. Nobody will ever use it. Today, these lights... Before, before us, all came from his invention and Nikola Tesla's uh, ideas. So these were highly criticized. People thought that these scientists were out of their mind, if you will. They were crazy. They were nuts. There's no way this is going to work. Yet we use electricity in nearly everything that we have. Everything we need. You know, your cell phone, it needs electricity to charge. Uh, you know? Um, so everything we have, you know, we use that direct current. We, or, or not direct current, we use, uh, see, look, I just said the wrong thing, Luke. Uh, we use alternating current. 
the car uses direct current, you know. But anyway, they, people thought they were out of their minds. But look what they achieved by going against the grain, if you will. Um, Isaiah 55 and 8 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. In Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, we see this story of uh, these four friends who decide that they're going to carry their buddy to Jesus. See, Jesus was in a house and he was surrounded by a crowd of people. And they realized that they couldn't get to him unless they went to the extreme. So the four friends, they, they carry their buddy up on top of the roof. So climbing on top of roofs are sometimes smart idea, right? And they began to tear the roof off so that they could lower their friend to Jesus because they knew that, that they needed to get to him. Now, I don't know about... One, I think if I was the homeowner, I might think, they're crazy. What, what do they think they're doing? But the crowd around them probably was thinking, and I'm not trying to insert things in the Word of God, but I think if I was there, I'd say, they're out of their minds. That is nuts. What do they think they're doing? But it achieved such a result that the Lord healed him that day. He forgave his sins and healed him. So there are moments where he, they had to be out of their own thinking. They had to go beyond what everybody else was thinking. In Luke chapter 9, 10 through 17, Jesus is teaching to the multitude, the 5,000 men. And he tells the disciples, he says, we got to feed them. And they said, yeah, but we don't have enough. Their thinking was a little smaller than Christ's. He said, nah, go sit them down 50 to 50 and 50. He goes and let me do my thing. They're probably thinking, he's out of his mind. <laughs> but really, he had, he had the mind of Christ. He was Christ. And when they, when they were finished, there were 12 baskets of leftovers. So, so when, in those moments that our natural thinking gets in the way, we've got to get out of our mind. And take on the mind of Christ. You see, the mind of Christ is necessary to realize that God takes the broken sinner. The unclean. And when he washes us clean, he fills us with his spirit and empowers us to live in righteousness and in his holiness. You see, it, it, it doesn't take the natural mind to do this. We've got to take on the mind of Christ and say, this is beyond me. This is beyond what I can do, but Christ, if I take on his mind, it's all possible. All things are possible in him, by him, and through him. We've just got to get, got to get rid of our thinking. Glory, mighty God. Glory, mighty God. You know, I begin to think, you know, you, know, you come to church, you get saved, and, and maybe them naysayers will be like, what do you mean you're not an alcoholic? You must be out of your mind. What do you, I, I just saw you last week in a bar. What do, you, what do you mean that you're not an alcoholic? What do you mean you're not drinking anymore? What do you mean your life has changed? You must be out of your mind for it to happen. You just got to take on the mind of Christ. You take on the mind of Christ because he sees, you what you, he sees what you can't see. He looks beyond you and he, and he can see the changed person. He can see the hope. He can see, he can see the life abundantly. You know, Sister Vicki, I was thinking, how many years did, did you pray for, for Brother Gene? You know, and I'm sorry to call him out. He just always called out. Brother Gene, right? I knew he was here tonight. That's why I, that's why I said it. But, I mean, he's married and a recovery specialist. If you would tell that, that, old, that old man, if you would tell the old friends, they'd probably say, you're out of your mind. And it's absolutely true. Completely out of his mind, he now has the mind of Christ by the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> statistically, I should be dead. Statistically, I should be an addict. Statistically, I should be in prison, but I stand before you today without the mind of man, but with the mind of Christ. I don't know about you, but that excites me a little bit. That excites me a little bit to know that, that God saw beyond who I, could have been, who I could have become and created something new. Because in Him, you become a new creature. In Him, you, you, you get a new mind. You get a new heart. You get a new, you get a new, you get a new life. 
you get new results. What, what do you mean that every man in your family has anger issues, but you don't? You've got to be out of your mind. Listen, that's the God that we serve. Because you might have been born one way, but then when you're born again, whoo, glory, mighty God. When you're born again, it's the new mind. There's a new mind. Listen, your kids don't have to inherit it. They don't have to partake of it. Because that's the natural mind. But we take on the mind of Christ. You know, there's several names I can mention. You know, uh, Sister Tammy. Brother, Bu Brother Buster. Brother Buster. I don't know about you, but that excites me a little bit. All the prayers. When you pray with the mind of Christ instead of with the natural man. To say, you know what, you know, there are, there, are, there are probably weak moments, right, Sister Tammy? And you think, you know what, I feel like no matter how much I'm praying, and nothing's coming to pass. Years or, or days, months, years, hours, it all adds up and there's discouraging moments. But the Lord would say, be encouraged. Because looky right there, Brother, Brother Buster, sitting right there. Because of prayers in the mind of Christ instead of in the mind of man. That's what our God can do. He hears, he knows, he sees, he sees beyond what we can see. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mighty God, mighty God. When we pray, we must be out of our minds and in the mind of Christ. No matter the situation, even when it seems impossible, with God, it is possible. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. You know... Something that I realized recently, I, I, I was blessed to be able to be a part of a friend's wedding uh, over the weekend. And about a year ago, um, I had reconnected with him a little over a year ago at a, at a, at a funeral. And uh, I, as I was connecting, he, he lives a little bit of a way, so I can't just go visit him and stuff. So I, we would talk every now and again, but um, I could see that he was on the verge of backsliding. And he has such a foundation in truth, like with his family, that, that, that kind of startled me a little bit and uh, made me a little nervous. And when I began to pray and pray and pray for him and just a uh, spirit of intercession and moments would come over me as I prayed for him. And it seemed like nothing was happening. And then about 11 months ago, what I didn't realize was happening was God began to speak to a man in Maryland. And... As God was dealing with that man, he, he ended up coming to a little town in Ohio that he had never even heard of. And is now pastoring a local church there when he had never even heard of the town in the first place. I'm glad to say that, you know, I went to my buddy's wedding over the weekend. And uh, probably within the next month, he's going to be operating in some form of leadership. He's a young man, 20 years old, and he got married. But I did not realize what God was doing in the midst of my prayers. I was a little discouraged, I was a little worried, but God was actually answering my prayer when I didn't even realize it. Listen, when all things seem impossible, even the people that you can't personally reach, God will answer that prayer. God will hear. He sent a man that was, that was in ministry in Maryland and says, okay, quit your job, forget your pension, give it all up, and go pastor this church in a town you've never heard of, and now there's, they had seven people in their church 11 months ago. There was 80 people in service yeah. just over the weekend. That is God moving and answering prayer. Not just for my buddy. Listen, his backslidden brother, his father's been coming to church with him. So not just him, it's his family as well. It's just pouring out over the entire area and the entire town. That is the God that answers prayer even beyond what I could see, beyond what I could understand. Even though I thought it might be seemingly impossible because I couldn't be involved in it because of the things going on in his life, I, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't involve myself you know, because I live far away. I prayed with faith. And, and that's, what, that's all you got to do. The word joy, and this isn't in my notes, but uh, just on my heart. The word joy when talking about the joy of the Holy Ghost is being positive in a pessimistic moment. That's faith. You get to speak things. You get to speak life when everything seems death because it's not your mind. It's the mind of Christ that we take on. And that's the most amazing part. The pastor says this, you got to get rid of your stinking thinking. You know, 
you get rid of your own mind, you get rid of your own thoughts, and you begin to speak life, and you speak peace, and you speak joy, because that is the mind of Christ. My God, my God. Listen, Mama, don't stop praying for the babies. Listen, it works. It's real. It is so real that he hears. Here, here's the one thing I learned about God. He listens to prayer. He hears God and he begins to draw, but he is a perfect gentleman and doesn't force. He's never going to force them, but that doesn't mean he's not drawing them because there are moments of hope. You know, you see little glimmers of it. That's him drawing, him drawing on them. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. It works. My mama's sitting right back there. Hey, Dad. He surprised me tonight. I'm excited. 19 years. 19 years I prayed for my mama. She working at the school. <laughs> Listen, I don't know about you. You know, there were, there were moments that seemed hopeless. You, you, you feel like, okay, the prayers, it's never going to happen. And you, you say verses like, well, Jesus was rejected in his own house too. You know what I'm saying? Those, those, that's how you kind of comfort yourself in those moments. But the reality was God was listening the whole time. He was working in the background in a way that I never could. But you just got to keep praying with faith, praying with hope. Because that's the mind of Christ. Don't be discouraged. The Lord is saying, don't be discouraged tonight. I hear you. I know and I am working. Don't, don't, don't use your own mind, but take my mind and let me do my work. Just keep praying in faith. Listen, 13 years old and God healed me of diabetes. He's still the healer today. Okay? Cancer, sickness, disease. Nothing is impossible with our God. Nothing. If, you have a, if, if, you're, if you're relying on your human, human mind, it seems hopeless. But when we take on the mind of Christ, we, when we sur surrender our will in our way, when you say, God, not my wants, but your wants, your will, your intentions for my life, that, that, that's when he begins to put even greater desires in you and you can speak the life because he's put it in you. God is listening and God is answering. I'm closing at the moment. I told you I wouldn't be long. I told you it's simple, but it's so, so real. His answers can be so vast. And what he can do is beyond even your wildest imaginations. But you got to take those moments when, when, when you are going to him at this altar, when you're going to him in your personal altar. You've got to say, God, I know how I'm thinking. You got to be honest with God. I know how I'm thinking, but I want to cast off my thinking. I want your mind. I want to see what you see. Sister Brown, them babies, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, when, when you're praying, you picture them saved, don't you? You're a praying woman. You picture them saved with faith. You, you, you picture the, the hope and the peace and the joy and the life abundant. That's what the Lord's trying to say tonight. He's here to encourage somebody today. Don't stop praying. Don't give up. He is working. Just get rid, of your, get rid of your mind and take on his mind. Lord God, I thank you for each and every one of your people here today, God. I thank you for a word of encouragement, a word of faith, oh God. I, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bind every seed of doubt. I bind discouragement and I loose encouragement. I loose faith in this house in Jesus' name. I loose blessings and life and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mighty God, thank you for what you're doing in each and every one of us. Thank you, oh God, for what you're doing in the background, God. God, we surrender our thinking. We surrender our mind to yours, oh God. Lord, let us see the way that you see. Let us hear the way that you hear. Let us envision what you would have us envision, oh God. Lord, in Jesus' name, if you would stand and pray, if you would stand and just surrender to the Lord the things that are his, let your faith be increased. God is saying with me, all things are possible.